Hello, School Transportation Nation. This is Tony Corbin, publisher of School Transportation News. I want to welcome you to the podcast. This episode is brought to you by TransFinder, the leader in school bus routing software. Our tech tip is brought to you by Zonar, a leader in smart fleet management. Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan Gray, editor-in-chief of School Transportation News. Tony, guess what? Quote, There is momentum. That's what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said on Friday regarding the latest attempts to get some much needed COVID stimulus. Uh, That would be good for everybody, don't you think? Yeah, Ryan, I think it's some big bucks too. What, 908 billion? What's that carve up look like? Yeah, well, it's they're still drafting a lot of it right now. They're they're eyeing an approval this week. So once this podcast comes out, hopefully we'll already have a deal. It's along the lines of about twenty or thirty billion dollars for transportation sector, and about eighty four or eighty five billion for education. So that alone, right there, is some some welcome news. But again, there's still some negotiating going on. Definitely a lot less than what Democrats called for over the summer. Still, there has been some pushback from uh, Senate leader McConnell. He wants more along the lines of $500 billion. So still some wrangling going on. But definitely, there is a lot of need still for, for relief. People are really hurting out there. We saw Unemployment fall again after November, but not as far as as many would have liked to have seen. So certainly people are are hoping that they can get some relief. There is some talk in this uh, new stimulus of uh, additional unemployment insurance along the tune of, of an additional four months or so, three, four months. No stimulus for everyone, at least right now. So that uh, additional $1,200 in everyone's paycheck doesn't look like it's going to happen if this does push through. But again, lawmakers are trying to keep that overall dollar amount down because we have spent a lot of money. We've seen the deficit increase, of course, throughout COVID-19. So certainly we have to remember that uh, money we get now into the economy or into our pocketbooks, we're going to end up paying that later in taxes. So that said, you know, things obviously are are still really bad and and seemingly getting worse out there in terms of COVID. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, said last week that winter will be, quote, the most difficult time in public health history of this nation, unquote. Boy, that's pretty dire. And that's if people don't follow precautions. And really, you know, we're talking about masks. CDC is estimating nearly 450,000 deaths are possible by February if most Americans don't wear masks. So on Friday, they came out and they recommended universal use of face masks by everyone when you're not at home. It's uh, shaping up to be a pretty dreary winter, of course, you know, as cold grips much of the nation. But, you know, COVID definitely seems to be getting worse before it gets better. Yeah, Ryan, I think there's definitely been a lot of talk about what the funding is going to do. And and I do hope that, you know, there can be bipartisan kind of come together from from the different political entities that are pushing and pulling to get what they want out of this uh, stimulus bill. And, you know, there's definitely a lot of people out there. I know uh, there was a quote from Peter Pantuso, the president and CEO of the American Bus Association, and he said the industry has run out of time. And I definitely feel that, right? Like businesses have been just hanging on the razor's edge. They've just been walking that line, trying to like keep everything going. I know the National School Transportation Association, you know, executive director Kurt Maxson said similar comments, right? The, the money is much needed. The stimulus money is much needed for struggling operators who operate not only motor coaches, but school buses as well. So I think there was an allocation of about $8 billion in there for the private motor coach industry, which you know, some of those people are, are school bus contractors as well. So yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely much needed. I, I can feel it out there. We're, we're really getting close before things turn real bad, like you said. But, you know, I like to stay optimistic. I'm ge- generally an optimistic person. So with the vaccine, I think everybody's kind of like feeling, oh, should we be just more relaxed? But yeah, with all the holidays with Thanksgiving and then Christmas and, and Hanukkah and all the other holidays coming up around December, it's more family time and all the, you know, don't see your immediate family, don't travel out of state. I know for my daughter's school, she literally is starting school next week, one day a week for two hours. And that is it, right? And they're like, if you go out of state, you got to quarantine for two weeks. 
So, you know, it, it's hardcore right now. You know, you, they don't want people. And obviously, California is, is aggressively growing with COVID cases and they're trying to do the stay at home order and closing the restaurants and, and, and everything that they can do to try to curb this outbreak. And, you know, I have friends that are physicians too and in the South Bay where we live and they're like, they've never seen so many sick people coming in. So that gives me, you know, cause for concern when you start to hear that from local friends and families and people that are physicians. Those are scary things. So yeah, there's there's just a lot of uh, a lot of reason to kind of put on that mask and make sure you're safe. With all this kind of uncertainty and everybody kind of battening down the hatches, we are still in virtual conference mode. So STN Expo virtual is uh, steaming ahead January 25th through the 27th. We have our registration open. You can go on and book your spot. Nowhere to travel to other than to your computer. So it's safer than ever for you to get the training that you need to get ready for when school actually does start up again and to be prepared. And uh, we have two keynote speakers that we've confirmed, Ryan, Mr. Ross Bernstein. He's an acclaimed author around some sports books, The Champion's Code. He's going to be talking about achieving success through unorthodox methods, more around kind of the money ball, like doing more with less, getting creative. He should be a great keynote speaker. He spoke 2018 at uh, STN Expo in Reno, and he really was a showstopper. So really look forward to hearing what Ross has to say. And also Mr. Ryan A. Avery, another acclaimed award-winning journalist, two-time best-selling author, and a world record holder of being the ultimate public speaker. So he's got a lot of really great conversations planned, and he's going to be talking go from fatigued to fulfilled. So I'm sure everybody's feeling a little fatigued right now, so I I could use his uh, pearls of wisdom. So yeah, you guys want to sign up and hear those great keynote speakers, go to stnexpovirtual.com to learn more. And uh, Ryan, speaking of uh, STN Expo Virtual, we've got our title sponsor, Zonar, providing us a tech tip today and they are a leader in smart fleet management. Keeping up with constant change makes it easy to miss a beat or a new piece of fleet tech that makes riding the bus safer. Take a deep breath and see which contactless solution from Zonar could be that missing piece for you. Electronically verified sanitization and inspections, digital rider visibility for contact tracing, right bus, right stop verification. See how you can make the ride safer for everyone on board. Learn more at Zonar Systems dot com slash protect. So Tony, you were talking about the vaccines. Any day now, we should have at least one of them become available. So uh, CDC was scheduled to start holding meetings this week to review and perhaps approve the Pfizer vaccine. And next week, we'll do the same for the Moderna vaccine. Uh, Interesting enough, Great Britain already has approved the Pfizer vaccine and those first doses are already being given. So that is some some welcome news. Uh, Certainly a lot of people have been waiting for a vaccine. Scene. It's that hot topic that everyone's talking about. But still, you know, how many people are going to actually take it? You were mentioning the NSTA, the National School Transportation Association. They've really been urging that school bus contractors petition their respective governors to get school bus drivers to the front of the line. School bus drivers were referred to as essential workers by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security back in August. So they they are considered essential, critical workers for both the transportation, logistics, and education sector. So that speaks very well for them. But one of the questions remains, how many school bus drivers are going to actually take the vaccine? That's something that we're looking at right now. And I was actually speaking with a contractor last week and he was kind of like, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's something that as an employer, whether you're at a school district or at a bus contractor or at a vendor, you know, a manufacturer, you can recommend vaccines, flu, whatnot. But as a business owner, Tony, you can't come in and tell me that I have to take a vaccine. So so that's something that I haven't really seen a lot reported on right now. So we're certainly you know looking to talk to some people and find out their thoughts on this. We do know that, you know, speaking of the flu vaccine, not every American takes it. 
you know, and we know that the flu kills millions of people a year. And certainly COVID is far outdistanced that. It's been a lot more aggressive and, and causing a lot more problems as we've seen. But still, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reticence to take something that's brand new, let alone something that some people just might not agree with. And some interesting data that, that I saw recently, according to the CDC, less than half of Americans ages six months and older got the flu shot during the 2018 and 19 season. So it just kind of illustrates to you that disconnect there. That equates to 62% of children ages six months to 17 years getting the vaccine and 45% of all adults. So Obviously, a lot of school districts, public school districts require vaccines uh, now for for children to go to school. But like I said, how do they require their their employees to do it? At the same time, the U.S. Health and Human Services, they want 70 percent of all people to get the COVID-19. That's what the threshold they think that can, you know, help kind of turn the tide enough of those people get that that vaccine that they can start seeing the trend go down. It still seems, though, that there's plenty of work to do to get wide-scale buy-in, no matter how bad COVID is. Also, too, last month, a Gallup poll went out and, and surveyed Americans to find out if they'll take this COVID vaccine. The good news there was it went up to 58% from 50% in September, who said they'll get it. Older people are more apt, uh, not surprisingly, to, to get the vaccine, two-thirds of the people. And of course, that, that happens to, to be a, a very big demographic for school bus drivers. So, you know, we obviously also saw a lot of willingness kind of depend on party lines. So, so, you know, if, if people were Democrat, they were more apt to say, yeah, they're going to get the vaccine. If they're Republican, more apt to be a little bit more hesitant. So, again, you know, a, a lot of good news on, you know, vaccine development. I think it's the, the some of the fastest, if not the fastest in history. So that's incredible. The amazement of, of modern medicine. But still, it does not seem to be a panacea to cure all. We're still going to be uh, fighting this thing for a while and, and really see kind of what the real world acceptance of the vaccines are. Ryan, you had shared a story with me about children being required potentially to get vaccinated before going back to school, right? Like I know when you go to school, right? You got to turn in your vaccine sheet to go to school. Uh, is that potentially going to be a requirement? I, I don't know. Can they even do that? It feel like it, is it unconstitutional? I mean, this kind of comes back to if you want to partake of the service, it's a requirement of, of getting it. I mean, where, what's your take on that? Well, that, that was an education week uh, article that came out on Friday. And you know, to your point, what I mentioned earlier, you know, public schools already require most of their children to uh, get vaccinated. Some states also allow for families to opt out for religious or personal reasons. So it's definitely not a, a one size fits all thing. Another thing about these new vaccines is it seems like the, the vaccine for children is a ways off. So a lot of what we've heard that's been developed by Pfizer and Moderna, these are for teenagers basically and above. So when you're talking about kindergarten through middle school, uh, maybe even to high school, those kids aren't going to be able to get these vaccines. And then we come back to a lot of the the research and some of the studies that have come out that said that, you know, children at first, they didn't get COVID-19 and then it was, well, they don't get it as bad. Now it's been, well, they can get it just as often as other people, but they tend to not show the same kind of symptoms or the same severity of symptoms that uh, maybe some other children that maybe have underlying health conditions. Certainly, there's a big concern still about students with disabilities. But, you know, I, I think it's it's definitely something that everyone is, is looking at of like, what are states going to require? What are school districts going to require once a vaccine is ready for these children to get back into class. But in the meantime, certainly the the big push is to get first responders to get these vaccines. So we're talking about our doctors, our nurses, our, our hospital and medical staff, of course, firefighters, police, emergency first responders, school bus drivers, as I mentioned, you know, 
restaurant workers, delivery workers, even the energy sector. So those infrastructure, critical infrastructure folks are the people that seem to be getting in line uh, first. But then something else that we'll have to see is, you know, Alex Azar, the Secretary of the Health and Human Services, said last week that he anticipates the way that we're going, that maybe by spring we'll have enough vaccines for everyone, or at least all adults or most adults in the nation. Could be pie in the sky stuff, not sure, but that's certainly what what he alluded to. So again, you know, we'll, we'll see how the vaccines uh, evolve from here. Again, certainly I've heard that there, there seems to be, at least by the spring or the summer, there seems to be enough, um, at least forecasted to be enough for everyone. So how that will then uh, trickle down to, to the actual children will, remains to be seen. Well, Ryan, shifting gears, we are just days away from the Hanukkah, Christmas, New Year's. And you know what that can mean? New Year's resolutions. And that's a decision for making the new year better than last year. Gosh, we definitely need a better year than last year. And one way to do that is to resolve to get your hands on the most powerful routing software and parent app available on the market today. TransFinder's browser-based Route Finder Plus is the most innovative software in the industry, and it works seamlessly with StopFinder, which gives you the best information on where your student's bus is located. RouteFinder Plus and StopFinder were voted the most innovative software by industry leaders at the Bus Technology Summit held in September. The TransFinder Special Cares Act will help you get plus for as low as $4,995. But the TransFinder Cares Act expires December 31st. So act now. Learn more about the most robust routing and parent app in the industry and how to take advantage of the Cares Act. Email getplus at transfinder.com and put resolution in the subject line. All right, Ryan, let's talk about some big headlines that came out last week. There's been a lot of uh, M&A, acquisition, merger, some really great nuggets of information you found out from our upcoming 2021 Buyer's Guide. What, What do you got for us? Yeah, well, as uh, you can expect, school bus manufacturing really took it on the chin. I think that's exactly what I say in our upcoming buyer's guide, down a little over 18%. That's a pretty big haircut uh, for the industry. We, obviously, with so many school buses ground to a halt through the spring and through most of the summer months and even into the fall, that was bound to happen, right? Uh, really was not too big of a surprise. Still not good news. Hopefully, again, if if this uh, latest stimulus plan of $908 billion can come to fruition, there is some small business and transportation and education funding afforded in those. Hopefully, that can uh, spur some growth. But you have to be honest, the, the OEMs are a bit pessimistic looking through 2021. One analyst was telling me, looking at the overall truck and, and bus segment, that they really don't see the pre-COVID-19 production levels returning until 2024. Certainly, that doesn't speak well for already an aging school bus fleet nationwide. Uh, last year, uh, we talked about the fact that even with the the modest growth that had been occurring over the last several years, really coming out of the, the Great Recession, the new orders were not keeping up with the aging legacy fleet. That continues to be a problem that's only going to be exacerbated. You know, that said... Despite the fact that things are looking still pretty precarious on the the economic front, the stock market is still doing pretty well. It's been buoyed lately upon the news of these vaccines, certainly. Um, And we're we're seeing, while there's still some of that that pessimism in in terms of the short-term production, companies are still really moving and shaking, Tony. You were mentioning mergers and acquisitions. Um, The S&P global forecast for 2021 came out last week, and they mentioned that they're really looking at increased M&As in the new year. Part of that is out of necessity, right? So many businesses are hurting, right? It comes back to comes back to that. And so they're looking to protect themselves. It's kind of like, you know, relief in numbers coming together, a lot of mergers, companies trying to, to save money, but they're also taking advantage of the market, right? Uh, interest rates are at all time lows right now. So there there is funding out there to get. There is a, a lot of the, the federal stimulus money that, that is still making their way through states. 
meets. So, you know, there is some optimism. Basically, I think the lesson to take away is that businesses in the student transportation industry, for the most part, they're not standing pat, right? Just look at what the Lion Electric Company announced uh, last week. They're merging with Northern Genesis Acquisition Corp. With the electric school bus brand eyeing a listing on the New York Stock Exchange. It's a half billion dollar deal in terms of net cash proceeds with a resulting combined market cap of $1.9 billion. So that's definitely nothing to shake your stick at. Meanwhile, of course, a couple months ago, this has really been something that's been proceeding this way for a couple years now. The Trayton Group, formerly known as Volkswagen Truck and Bus, they're moving forward with their much anticipated acquisition of Navistar. The subsidiary IC bus will definitely and already has benefited from that from that relationship. Meanwhile, Daimler AG, the parent company of Daimler Trucks North America, and of course Thomas Built School Buses, they're already investing seventy billion in Euro or eighty four point eight billion dollars US on electrification. And then Bluebird announced that it and Safety Vision are rolling out a mobile eye passive collision avoidance as a factory option. Combine Safety Vision's 360 degree camera with mobile eye system to alert school bus drivers about dangers on the road. And this uh, includes the forward collision, lane departure, pedestrian and cyclist collision warnings. So again, a lot of innovation still, still moving forward. And I think it comes back to opportunity, right? We can look at this COVID-19 thing as, you know, the, the sky is falling, or we can look and say, how can we make solutions out of this? How can we make lemonade out of lemons? So that definitely is encouraging. Yeah, Ryan. And also I saw a press release come out about Bluebird applauding Jeff Bezos for one of his philanthropic efforts to donate money and school buses were earmarked in that. You you have want to share a little detail on that with us? Yes. Yeah, so last month, uh, Jeff Bezos, he has an earth fund that is basically giving the World Resources Institute $100 billion over the next decade to do a couple of things, one of which is to further the acceptance and the growth of the electric school bus market. So when I was talking just previously about pretty dismal school bus production numbers, one of the things I mentioned in the buyer's guide, just kind of give everyone a sneak peek, is you know there has been some encouragement also in some school bus circles about a, a plan put forth by presumed president-elect Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders last spring that essentially calls for the entire national fleet of school buses to transition over to electric vehicles by 2025. Pretty ambitious stuff. And frankly, you know, probably not realistic. I think I calculated that looking at current electric output, the OEMs combined would have to increase their production by like 26,000%, which is just crazy. So I think that we realize no matter how much money you magically have to throw at uh, OEMs, they just can't ramp up their operations enough to start outputting that many that many school buses. But you, you had referenced Bluebird applauding this Earth Fund. They did mention that they're ramping up in 2021 to be able to produce a thousand electric buses. So it just shows you how much we still need to grow. And not all of this hundred million dollars, by the way, will go towards electric school buses. There's also some other initiatives that the World Resources Institute is, is going to do with this money. But it just shows you that there is a resolve to push zero emission vehicles in the school buses. So that that's definitely, you know, something that we're going to be watching and seeing how it supplements so many of the other projects projects that are going on. Because we, we can't forget, there are so many projects now going on across the nation from Virginia, of course, California, New York, Illinois, throughout the Midwest, down South. I was talking with Trey Stowe, who's the lead foreman for Fulton County Schools in, in the Atlanta area. And they recently got the very first electric school bus in Georgia. So, hey, Georgia is now getting in on the electric game. Who would have thunk it, right? So there's a, a lot happening. So it will really be interesting to see what the next decade really reveals to us. Again, I, I think everybody in the school bus world will look at kind of the, the campaign promise from, from Joe Biden of, you know, 480 to 500,000 school buses being electric by 2025. Eh, probably not. This Jeff Bezos Earth Fund is 
through 2030. That's a little bit more realistic. I actually also saw some information out of the UK last week that their forecasts for electric vehicles, and granted, keep in mind, this is all electric vehicles. It's going to be about 2030 before the ratio of internal combustion engines and electric vehicles is about a 70-30 split you know, still 70% ICE vehicles. So it shows you we still have a ways to go, but definitely we've seen a lot transpire and we're going to just see more of that going forward. Yeah, Ryan, and and STN sees it too, right? And uh, we are going to be bringing forward, you may have remembered it from a few years back, we launched an event called the Green Bus Summit in collaboration with STN Expo some years ago. We shelved it for a while and, uh, you know, with all this push into green, we felt it might be appropriate to reinvigorate what we had started and restart start the Green Bus Summit, which is actually going to be taking place in April in virtual form. So we're going to do Green Bus Summit virtual April 20th through the 22nd. For those of you that are checking your calendars, the 22nd also happens to be Earth Day. So trying to make a little bit of an impact with the information we're going to share with you, our audience about green, green energy, where it's going, how it's affecting you, the trajectory of it. It seems to be on a a vertical drive. So we'll be at the forefront of that conversation about green and green buses. And you can check out more information at greenbussummit.com. And uh, I want to thank everyone for, for joining us on today's podcast and listening to Ryan and I banter away about all the great things going on out in the industry. And we're really grateful to have you as a listener. And thank you so much. Make sure and go to stnonline.com for all your news analysis on all aspects of student transportation. Don't forget to sign up for the STN Expo virtual coming up soon on January 25th through the 27th. We love you. Our listeners, subscribe, stream, share the podcast. Leave us those five-star reviews. Make sure and check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And special thanks to our sponsors. We couldn't do it without you, TransFinder and Zonar. Thank you, School Transportation Nation. We'll see you next time. Thank you.